welcome to another edition of the Defender Roundtable. And we are counting down to the election and we've got some stuff we need to talk about, namely Kamala Harris's outreach to black men. That's been the topic all this week. We're going to get to some controversial stuff in just a minute, but we want to talk about her addressing black men um, were ready to be heard. And it looks like Kamala listened. Would you guys agree? Yes, I would. I would. I mean, I mean, I, I like this opportunity agenda. Uh, I wish it had come a little bit sooner, but I mean, it's here now. I mean, and, and you know, you want to because you really want to vet the, you know, the the real you know, the viability of, of of this plan. But I mean, but it sounds great, uh, you know. And people have to understand it. What I mean, the majority of black men are still supporting her, but it's just a it's a significant enough number of people who were kind of on the fence or, or or really just not supporting her. That's concerning. I mean, she's going in a tight race. She's going to need every section of, of, of support she can possibly get. And I think that speaks to um, an article that Rashonda wrote recently where she was just calling out the level of uh, sexism and misogyny that we have to confront in the black community because, you know, folks are saying she's not doing this, not doing that. And then she does it. And then there are some black men that still want to come for her. Um, I heard Jeff Johnson say um, earlier today on the Ricky Smiley Morning Show, he said this is the first time in the history of the United States that a president or presidential candidate has focused on the mental health and well-being of black men. He said, if for no other reason, we should stand and vote for her for that, because ain't nobody ever made that a part of their political agenda the physical, mental, emotional health and well-being of Black men. Right. And for those that don't know, the Opportunity Agenda for Black Men, it is basically a platform that includes business loans for Black entrepreneurs, legalization of marijuana, and better regulation of the cryptocurrency market. Now, remember that when Trump addresses Black men, it's all criminal justice because that's all Black men are to him. Criminals that need some justice. That's the only thing he talks about with Black men. And she's laid out this plan. Uh, Laura, you want to weigh in? Yeah. Um, to go off of Aswad's point, I said, you're not going to make everybody happy. You know, she's doing everything that she's supposed to do within the time span of her being nominated as the presidential candidate. And she's she's been running, doing everything that she's supposed to do. Even on the interview with Charlemagne de God, uh, she had to defend the criticism behind her being too scripted. Um, but she's, she called it as being disciplined. Um, it's a habit. If you keep repeating the same information over and over again, hopefully the information will click. And that's what I'm hoping with Black people, that they actually see this agenda, they hear it time and time again. Because when you go to Trump's side, you're not getting anything nothing. And so I just feel like um, in this case, her work and her efforts are being warped by her political rival, unfortunately. Yeah. I just don't understand it. I mean, you know, like how any black man in, in, in America can can support Donald Trump. I mean, he has no agenda, no plan for us. Like Rashonda said, I mean, you know, his idea of, of, of black reform is, is prison reform. And I'm like, Where's that coming from? I mean, you know, I've never been to prison and, and most of the people I know have never been to prison. So that doesn't apply. But I mean, you know, he he constantly kind of lets us know what he thinks of us. This whole idea of black jobs. I mean, you know, that's preposterous. We've been in this country. We've been making moves, you know, for more than a century now. I mean, and so, I mean, how can you, you know, we, we, we have every job is a black job for us. We, we've been president of the United States. That's a black job. But I mean, but this guy does not think highly of black people. And so anyone, and he doesn't have a, a specific plan for us. And as a matter of fact, he's dangerous. And so, I, I, so go ahead. That's I, I would argue he does have a plan for us. I mean, he has literally said that he wants to use the military to go after protesters. The main protesters that have been out there have been black people protesting against police violence. Um, you know, every time he talks about um, criminal justice reform, he's literally talking about putting more black people um, in jail. He's talking about giving police officers federal immunity, even more immunity than they already have to continue doing what they've already been doing. And I think all of this madness just allows us to overlook something that I think is just revolutionary. 
um, coming from Kamala Harris. She's talking about removing the college degree requirement from a whole lot of um, government jobs and pushing other industries to do the same. There are more workers and potential workers without college degrees than there are with degrees. That would break up the monopoly that universities have on getting people to the job market. That could potentially bring down the cost of um, tuition. That could potentially raise the the um, salaries of, of professors who some are literally working two, three, four jobs just to stay poor. So it's revolutionary and we're not even talking about it. Um, and some folk are still saying that she doesn't have a plan and I, I don't get it. I also think we're buying into the media hype. I think that at the end of the day, we know every single vote counts, but at the end of the day, blacks are going to do uh, what they've been doing. I believe Harris will receive 85, 90% of the black vote. Now we know even at 5% could make a difference in her winning or losing a critical state, but I don't think that black male support is the problem for Harris in this election. Over 60% of white men are going to vote for a convicted felon. Somewhere around 50% of white women are going to vote for an adjudicated rapist. Um, black men are not the problem. I understand we have to reach out and I appreciate her opportunity agenda. I'm glad at what she's done. But the problem in this country is how the majority of white people vote. Um, that's the force holding this country back, the majority of white people. So black people, we bear a lot on our shoulders. We're not going to bear um, th this loss. We need to be talking to the, the white uh, audiences and getting them out as well to vote uh, common sense. You know, we know Kamala is the best thing for black America. Trump shows us every day, but black men are not the problem. Amen. I, I, Ter Terrence, I, I, talk I to your country cousins, man. <laughs> I, I disagree a little bit just because, I mean, I, I think in a race that, that you know, when you look at all of the polls, I mean, this is neck and neck. I mean, and so every little bit counts and we got to take care of our, our own house. And that means the black vote. I mean, we know what we know what the white people are going to do, what the majority is going to do. I mean, and we we have to be able to count on that. I mean, you know, and, and keep in mind that this this race really is going to come down to about four or five critical, you know, uh, states. And and we need black people to to, to show up in mass and, and vote and be and be behind her because trust me, this guy's agenda for us, and I should have said this earlier, it's not positive. There's nothing good. He does have an agenda for us, but it it, it, it it'll set us back. I understand that. I, I mean I get I'm not saying we don't need to reach out, but but I think the media has jumped on this black men are the problem. And they're not. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I agree. And I, I'll just throw in there my, my sister in law works for Black Voters Matter. And um, she was she was really fired up and just overwhelmed, tired because they've been doing so much work. But the fact that over 300,000 people in Georgia hit the polls and early voting on the first day, I think is a positive, positive sign for what's going to happen this election season. And this is, might be the one time that I'm, I'm, I'm glad that the mainstream media is jumping on this story because it's waking people up. I mean, we need. Like I said, we need everybody who can show up to show up. And so I, I think this may this may be that one time when it's a good thing. I mean, Barack Obama felt it was important enough, guys, to keep to come out and, and, and say some very strong things that also rub some people the wrong way. But I mean, but he was he, but everything he said was true. We might well, not have liked it. Yeah, I, I said that. I mean, those if, if you were mad about what Barack Obama said, then he probably was talking to you. A hit exactly. dog is going to holler. Um, so I think that Barack Obama is the only person that could have had that conversation. Because, I mean, can you imagine Doug coming out and chastising black men or Tim Waltz coming out? So Barack was the only man that could do that. And the reality is those men that he were talking about exist. I, I talk to them. I interview them. They exist and they are staying home because Kamala is a woman and a woman doesn't belong in the pulpit and a woman doesn't belong in the in the White House. Which is absolutely even, insane. I'm sorry, Laura, go ahead. Yeah, no. And even uh, folks that I spoke that have spoken with who um, weren't fans of Obama's administration whatsoever, and they just happen to be black. Right. Um, we got to remember his time in office in his two his two terms. And what he had to go through with his promises to black people or his promises to the American public and what he had to go through in office just to get things moving. So if the vice president happens to win presidency, we we know what she's going to have to deal with to get some of these promises, uh, you know, going. 
and people need to be realistic of what is happening and who's in office and hence why those local and state elections are important, not just the uh, the presidency. Those people sitting in, who, those people who are not for the vice president are literally going to fight her tooth and nail if she wins the uh, president. And so that's why the voting at local levels and the state levels, we have to continue to keep pushing that even after this is all done and dusted. Definitely, Laura. It's a bigger I mean, fight. You know, definitely, we because we have to give her a workable Congress. I mean, you know, something yeah. that we did not give Barack in no. his second term, and, and as a, and as a result, he didn't get as much done as he would have liked to have gotten done. So, you're right. I mean, we it's it's so important that we you know we we flip these houses and, and make sure that you know that you know she has a workable Congress and some, some people who work with her agenda. Yeah. All right, we are out of time. I love t chatting with you guys between now and, and um, November 5th. We're going to keep talking elections because that's right right now. that That's the critical. But the Defender Roundtable will talk about everything under the sun. Just right now, we're talking about this very important election. And one of the things I want to close with, you know, going on social media and advocating for Black people um, in October means nothing if we don't show up with the same energy and ideas in January. So we are we are talking about all that we want from Kamala Harris and 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 Democrats um, them going after Blacks now and then forgetting about us after the election. It is up to us to make sure that we're not forgotten, no matter who's the president. Unfortunately, if Trump's the president, we, we can talk all we want. We know he's not going to listen, but that's my two cents. But we'll keep this same energy and we'll come back and we'll talk about next week what we want from Kamala Harris. What do black what does black America want from Kamala Harris? And we'd love to hear from you on what you think we want. And we'll talk about it next week. Thank God. Thanks, guys, for joining us. And, and, then, and, one, and one more thing, please subscribe to our our YouTube channel, uh, you know, please hit, press the button if you like what you hear and, and, and you and you want to weigh in and you want to be a part of, of this discussion. Uh, like I said, give us a shout. All right. And a click. Thank you. All right. We'll see you next week. Bye-bye.